Let's start the show. You already know who it is. My name is Mike Kyle, aka the Fantasy Vulture. I have over a decade worth of fantasy football experience, and I've continuously competed for fantasy championships over the course of the past six seasons. Let's make it seven in 2020. But enough of me. I'm here for you. On today's episode of the FB Show, we are going to continue our week one game recaps, breaking down every single week one game all through the lens of fantasy football on the docket we are going to be covering the las vegas raiders versus the carolina panthers so if you are excited for this game recap do a few things for me first off smash that subscribe button power running back style so that you never miss a video from me we are doing this for every single week one game and every game for week two and week three and week four there's a ton of fantasy content coming down the pipe but also if you are excited for this video in particular be sure to hit that like button down below like an open receiver downfield Derek Carr style and just kind of show your support for this video as a whole I'd greatly appreciate it last but not least follow me on all social media platforms at FF Vulture you can hit me up on all of those for any sort of trade advice whether that is a start set trade rumors or uh, waiver wire ads I'll be, I will be sure to get back to you whenever I possibly can. If you are subscribed, you guys know how we do highlights around here. If you aren't, you're about to find out. Let's jump right in. The Las Vegas Raiders playing their first game as Vegas versus the Carolina Panthers, my favorite team and my favorite city in Charlotte. Let's start off. First quarter, six minutes left. Derek Carter with a beautiful deep bomb to Henry Ruggs. My favorite play of week one. You guys know how much I love Henry Ruggs. He gets unfortunately tackled at the one yard line. I would have Jacob. lost my shit had he scored. But no worries zone. here. Josh Jacobs Touchdown. cleans it up for the one yard rushing and touchdown. Josh Jacobs getting a lot of hype in the fantasy special. community nice this offseason. Speaking of a lot of hype, Christian McCaffrey picks up right where he left off in his record breaking 2019 season. Finds his way for the one yard touchdown on the other end. But we aren't done yet. Derek Carr deep bomb to Nelson Aguilar in the back of the end zone. 25 yard catch and score Nelson for Aguilar Aguilar. coming over from Philadelphia. And did I mention Jacob. Josh Jacobs Pat being great fantasy? Well, touchdown. he scores again for the second time. This Carolina Panthers defense is Swiss cheese. Speaking of scoring for the second time, uh, that Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey guy, he's, uh, he's pretty good and going to give a nice little stiff arm after he's already in the end zone. Mega spike for McCaffrey is doing incredible things for the second straight year. There was a lot of talk about second if Teddy Bridgewater would be willing to go deep. And guess what? I got answers for you. He will, and he's going to connect with Robbie Anderson for the 75-yard touchdown in Carolina. Takes the lead. They go up. 30 to 27 in the fourth quarter. And speaking of showing up in the fourth quarter, uh, the Raiders are going to take the lead back, and Josh Jacobs is going to get his third touchdown of the game, the hat trick. And Vegas is going to win 34 to 30. Their first game as the Las Vegas Raider comes out a victory against the Carolina Panthers. There's a lot to talk about for this game. I've talked about this during the preview. I love both of these teams because, first off, I love Carolina because that, that's my squad. But then also I love the Raiders because I feel like they mirror what Carolina is doing right now, just simultaneously at the same, uh, just simultaneously and in, and uncoincidentally. So let's talk about this game real quick. I want to talk about Derek Carr. Derek Carr was somebody I, who I was considering streaming this week. This Carolina Panthers defense is not good. I can confirm that. Uh, Derek Carr, 30, 30 complete or 30 pass attempts, 22 completions, 239 yards. And the touchdown, he only did come away with about with about 14 fantasy points for you. And that's really unfortunate because I was expecting more things from him. But when you're talking about the Raiders, Josh Jacobs is going to be a focal point of that offense. And I don't think we were expecting Josh Jacobs to score three times. Josh Jacobs was an absolute machine. 25 carries, 93 yards on the ground, three touchdowns, four receptions for 46 yards. He finishes the day with 33.9 fantasy points. And then just kind of talking about some of the other wide receiver options here. We were expecting a lot of things from Brian Edwards. And even though I said, like, I didn't recommend starting him. I wanted to take a wait and see approach. But even taking that approach, I was really disappointed by what he did today. He only had one target and one catch for nine yards. What? Huh? This was the guy who was supposed to be starting on the outside. And he only saw one target. He was getting so much hype during the offseason. And it amounted to nothing during week one. So he really was a, he was probably one of the biggest disappointments, I'd say, on the week. But somebody who was not a disappointment. My baby boy, Henry Ruggs. I have talked him up 
all offseason long. I started him in place of Anthony Miller uh, this week. And Henry Ruggs, when I saw that 45-yard reception, that brought so much joy to my heart. And the reason why that brought so much joy to my heart was I was telling... I kind of was giving everyone like the same like the same thing with Ruggs where I was taking like that wait and see approach. But for me, I had the option of Ruggs or Anthony Miller, and I really thought like that like their outcomes would be the same. Like they have the same floors and their ceilings are are very similar as well. So, and I thought that because I talked Ruggs up all off season long, there's no way that I couldn't start him week one. So I ended up starting him. He had uh, two carries, which is nice because like those are scripted touches, and if what he what he does with those. Who knows? But just getting opportunities like that is going to be is going to be very beneficial for him. So two carries for 11 yards. He also had five targets, three receptions for 55 yards. But he did miss the majority of the second quarter uh, and some of the third as well. He got banged up with the knee issue. Uh, he just came down a little bit awkwardly and walked away a bit gingerly. I uh, was getting checked out by the medical staff. Went into the locker room before halftime. And so it was really one of those things where he comes out with that deep bomb and it looks really good to start his career. And then all of a sudden gets injured and I'm like, mother of God, please tell me it's not serious. He was able to make his way back, but he probably wasn't being targeted or really heavily involved after that injury. So just something to keep a note on. I mean, w when he was on the field, he looked really good, I thought. But just that, Im that injury really just took him out of the flow of the game. But I was excited from what I saw from my baby boy, Henry Ruggs. Shifting over to Carolina now, yo, Teddy Bridgewater, shout the fuck out to you, dude. Um, this was this was a player that I wasn't sure what to expect. So I have Derek Carr, Teddy Bridgewater, Gardner Minshew, and Drew Locke all kind of in like the same weird tier where I know what they could be. I just don't know what they are right now. Are they just guys who are going to give you a very safe 15 points per game and that's it with very limited upside after that but Bridgewater really did come through he came through with uh, 20 points 34 attempts 22 completions 270 yards a touchdown and a two-point conversion also four carries for 26 yards um, I thought Bridgewater looked really well uh, he was spreading the ball out left right and center which is something that I expected him to do this team has so many different receiving options to get involved and I really think that's going to help Bridgewater and the Carolina Panthers uh, the, the, in the Carolina Panthers offense this season. I've been saying it. This team's defense is not good. And in games like this where their opponent are, is putting up 34 points, the Panthers had to score. If you didn't score, you were going to get absolutely blown out of the water. That's how they have to keep things close this season. So putting up 30 on the board in week one was a really encouraging sign for me, for the Panthers offense. Christian McCaffrey, good to do Christian McCaffrey things. 23 carries, 96 yards, two touchdowns, three catches for 38 yards, finished with 26 points on the week. Shout out to you, CMC, proving to everybody again why you should be going number one in fantasy drafts. Robbie Anderson, eight targets, six catches, 115 yards, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion. The, like, the big issue here was, not even issue, the question was, do you start Robbie Anderson or Curtis Samuel, who's going to be the number two receiving option for this team. And I knew that Robbie Anderson and Teddy Bridgewater were working out all offseason. They were really just trying to, to develop that chemistry as two new faces coming into Carolina. And it looked like that Robbie Anderson really did have that chemistry with Teddy Bridgewater. He almost appeared to be like the safety blanket for him. Like six catches, he led the team in catches. Like that's just something that doesn't feel like a fluke uh, for uh, week one. DJ Moore. Bit of a down game, really disappointed in this because I felt like he very much aligned with Teddy Bridgewater's uh, play style. DJ Moore, nine targets, four catches for, for, for 54 yards. And then Curtis Samuel also had eight targets, five catches for 38 yards. Meh. Meh. The, the hype for Curtis Samuel is just going like this. It feels like every single game. So it does look like that Robbie Anderson is going to be... It's fine to rank them. DJ Moore, I just think it was a down game for him. I'm not going to remove him from being the number one option on this team in the terms of wide receivers. So I, I'd rank them DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, then Curtis Samuel. And I think Robbie Anderson is going to go like this. I think there's a very, very real possibility that we're going to start to see the Robbie Anderson that we've all been projecting that he could be finally start to emerge. Ian Thomas, I was disappointed with. He was a guy who I thought could break out this season. 
didn't do it in week one. Only two targets. Caught both of them for 16 yards. And that was pretty much it. All in all, though, this was a game. Like, this game went exactly how I expected it to go. Both these defenses are not great by any means. The Raiders have some athletes, but I'm not sure what the talent level actually is. And the Panthers' defense is just bad. So I did expect this to be a high scoring affair. I said in the preview I would smash the over and the over hit by quite a lot. So I think that's going to do it. For this game recap, if you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button down below and also smash that subscribe button so that you never miss a video from me. You can also follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture. I'll be sure to answer any of your fantasy football questions over on those platforms. And I will see you in the next video. Remember, people come and go, but fantasy championships are forever. Thank you so much for watching.